we're going to find horizontal asymptotes. In the previous video, we saw vertical asymptotes have x equals h. And that equation of a line has only the x variable and the number h. There's no y variable. The horizontal asymptote of a rational function has an equation that appears in the form y equals k. This linear equation has only the variable y, no x. It's the other way around. And the k is some number. A rational function, y equals the quotient of f of x and g of x, has only one horizontal asymptote, or none, but they can't have more than one, when the degree of the function of x, the polynomial in the numerator, is less than or equal to the degree of g of x, the polynomial in the denominator. If the denominator has a bigger degree, the horizontal asymptote will automatically be the x-axis, y equals 0. Now, this is really confusing. Stick with me, okay? If the numerator and denominator have an equal degree, we need to divide the leading coefficients, you know, the coefficients with the highest exponents, to find the horizontal asymptote. We have to make sure that they're written in descending order. So if you see something like this, where this 3x is back here and the 6x is up here, we can rewrite this as the denominator is a negative 3x plus 4, can't we? Then we've got them in the right order. This function has equal degrees, x is to the first degree, on the top and the bottom. So we just divide the leading coefficients on the highest degree terms. So 6 divided by a negative 3, y equals negative 2. Negative 2 is our horizontal asymptote for g of x. There's our horizontal asymptote. See? You put the vertical one in, and then you can draw your curve, right? So there's a rule for determining the equation of a horizontal asymptote. So if we've got y equals the quotient of f of x and g of x, look at it this way. We've got a to sub n x to the nth power. And then if you see, it goes n minus 1, and then it's going to go on and on until this a is to a sub 0. The denominator is going to do the same thing. It's going to be b to the sub n, where x is to the m power. And then it's going to be minus 1, etc., to 0. And this is going to be minus 1, etc., to 0. See that? That should actually be an m here, shouldn't it? So y is equal to a sub n divided by b sub m. See that? That's when the n and the m are equal. Stick with me if you're confused. This means that the highest degrees of the polynomials are the same. And the fraction is made up of lead coefficients of the two polynomials. When n is less than m, then the y is going to equal 0. That's when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, y equals 0. So this should clear up any confusion. So here we've got a numerator that's got a 3x to the fourth power, and the leading coefficient of the denominator is x to the fifth power. So because 4 is less than 5, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. See that? So when this one is less than the denominator 1, it's going to be y equals 0. Now take a look at here. We've got a 4 and a 4. So now they're equal. The degrees are equal. We just divide. There's an invisible 1 here in front of this x to the fourth power, isn't there? So it would be 3 divided by 1, or y equals 3, and then we would have our horizontal asymptote. See? Does that make sense? So remember... Asymptotes are just imaginary lines that a curve gets closer and closer to but never touches. And they're lines drawn to help us with the shape and direction of the curve or function. And they show us where the function isn't. Okay? We're going to talk about oblique asymptotes in the next video. And I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. And I hope I'll see you there. Bye.